I'm a water bird and I waddle. What am I? I'm a duck. <laughs> Warwick said he was a quack. Uh, if I canter, if I canter, what am I? I'm a horse. If I pronk, I've got to be a a springbok. You know that thing they do? They do when they're being chased. It says, don't chase me because I can even keep up with you, in front, ahead of you, and jump at the same time. So how I walk shows what I am. I can't be a duck and walk like a dog, can I? But it seems there were some people uh, trying to tell the Ephesians that you could be one thing but walk like another. Somehow you could be in the family of God but not like walk like you're in the family of God. Is that right? Well, we'll see what God has to say about that. Why don't I pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have spoken to us in your word. As we listen, we pray by your spirit we might believe what you're saying to us. As we sit under your word, we might understand what you're saying to us and you might apply it by your spirit to our hearts that we might walk in light and not in the darkness that we once loved. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Ephesians 5, verses 6 to 14. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore do not become their partners, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness and truth, testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Everything exposed by the light is made visible, for what makes everything visible is light. Therefore it is said, get up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God indeed. Well, here's where we're going today. You'll find this on your sermon outline. <clears throat> These are our points. How we walk shows what we are. So walk as the light, not as the darkness, but instead expose the darkness. So how we walk shows what we are. <clears throat> you might remember from last week's passage that Paul said that anyone who continues to walk or to live uh, like they were still dead in their sins, it shows that they have not actually crossed over from death into life. They're not in God's family and they don't have any inheritance as part of his family. So if someone comes along to you and says something like this, hey Paul, we're saved by grace, not works. Your walk doesn't save you. Well, they'd be right up to that point, wouldn't they? But what if they then went on to say, so you can still walk the old walk because you're still saved. Paul says to that person, or to his Ephesians, don't listen to them. It's an empty argument. You'll see that in verse 6. It's an empty argument and a deadly one. If you believe it, it will drag you into hell. Because sin makes God angry, friends. The kinds of things Paul was talking about in last week's passage, sexual immorality, impurity, greed, it's a kind of a coverall, isn't it, of all sorts of other things. These things make God angry. And someone who continues to walk in those things shows, I am not part of God's family, I am a son of disobedience, which uh, literally is what uh, the disobedient means in um, verse 6 there. Their life says, I am still dead in my sins. Now, I'll bet there's someone here uh, who's feeling very uncomfortable right now. You might be thinking, oh, but I'm sure I've been saved. But I still keep sinning. And sometimes the same sins over and over again. Where does that leave me? Am I really saved? Or am I still in the darkness? I hope we can work towards an answer for that 
Uh, but for now, the big point here is if you're in the family, you'll walk like you're in the family. If you're not, you'll walk some other way. And anyone who says something different is lying. So our first point, how we walk shows who we are. Well, today's passage is well into the second half of Paul's letter. But we're not going to make any sense of that second half. It's the half half where he gives us his commands, Lord's commands, unless we understand what he's already said in the first half. So that's where our little picture here comes in. Uh, kids, you can uh, you can have a look at this and fill in the blanks if you want to. We'll have a, so here we go. This is what we're doing. Right. So you'll see, Paul describes us once as something in something. We were dead in sin, or in the picture he uses in in today's passage, we are darkness. We are darkness. But so, and so we walk as those dead in sin or darkness. We are walking our own walk. I don't want anything to do with you, God. We're going to walk our own walk. But then something happens, doesn't it? The Lord sends our our Saviour, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who dies and, and our sins are forgiven in him and he brings us into his family, into Christ. And so over here, this is what's done to us. You can draw some lines through there because we must come through Christ, that we are alive in Christ. Or, as Paul tells us today, we are light. And so when we are light, we we start to take on the family likeness. And so we can see walking in the shape of this, this crown, which is Christ. When we are darkness, we walk as darkness. When we are light, we walk as light. But the big point here is this must happen to us first. This, this makes no sense until we understand that we have come through Christ and been brought into him. That has happened to us. So we used to be darkness or dead in our sins and we walked like it. Now we're light in the Lord. We're alive in Christ. So that's how we now walk. What we are has changed. So how we walk changes. We take on the family likeness, remember. We have a dear cousin, Dean. He's a builder, and he tends to stand like this. Well, uh, unbeknownst to him, at a uh, family barbecue uh, recently, uh, he was standing with his little mini-me sons and uh, all standing like this, about this high they were. You see, we take on the family likeness, don't we? And what is the likeness of the, the light family? What is their walk, or children of the light, as uh, Paul puts it in um, the second half of verse 8 there? Live as children of the light, or literally walk as children of the light. We see, this new walk produces fruit. That's our new purpose. That's always been our purpose, but we have been purposed for that. Paul told us earlier, we are God's creation created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And they'll be works that show God's worth, won't they? How good he's been to us. We've been recreated, saved in Christ, to produce fruit. Verse 9, that fruit is growing in goodness and righteousness and truth. When God's family begin to show the family likeness, the head of the family looks good, doesn't he? See, that's his likeness that we're taking on. Goodness and righteousness and truth. But let's face it, walking in the fruit of light doesn't come naturally, does it? Left in our natural state, remember, we would still be darkness. But we're going to look at that issue in a second. But for the moment, that's our second point. So to recap, one, how we walk shows what we are, so walk as the light. Point three is now not as the darkness, point three. No one wants to live a life without purpose, do they? Does anyone really want to get up and say, it will make absolutely no difference to anyone if I get up out of bed today or if I don't? Some people do feel that way, but no one really strives for that, do they? 
See, we've been designed to feel that we should have a purpose. And friends, we do have a purpose, as I said before, to produce fruit, the fruit of displaying the goodness of God. And that's what walking as the light does. But what kind of fruit does the walking as the darkness produce? Well, none, actually. We're made so that our good works say, God, you are of great worth. But the works of darkness say, God, you're worthless. It's better for me to do things that mock your character. I'll twist your good things into something evil. And friends, that is the very opposite of why we were made. We were made for fruit that brings glory to God and the works of darkness offer him nothing at all. They are fruitless. That's, that's, and that's Paul's reason that we have are to have nothing to do with them. In verse 11 there, don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness. But what could that look like? Let's think about what it might look like to participate in the fruitless works of darkness. I'm just going to take one example. Um, our screen time or our media, books. Let's think about the things that we, we soak in. What is the message of this book or website or game or film or TV show? Is some kind of rebellion against our God being presented? Greed, impurity or sexual immorality or any other expression of I'm God and you're not? If it's there, how is it being presented? Is it celebrated or is it critiqued? I mean, sometimes sin does need to be portrayed but is it being portrayed as the darkness it is? Or is it darkness being presented as light? Now, that media might be saying, yes, bad is bad, but is the primary source of the entertainment your exposure to those works of darkness? As you watch, ask yourself this question. Has this media been created to entertain me by celebrating sins that Jesus died for, that Jesus died to free you from. Now, don't swallow the lie, the satanic lie, and say, oh, I can watch these things without them affecting me. If you do, you're probably so comfortable with them that Satan has you right where he wants you. Wake up. Stop marinating in that poison. Friends, if you continue to soak in it, and that kind of thing, it will kill you eternally. This is how I've seen it go, and I've been on this path myself. This is how the cancer of those little sins worked in a friend of mine. He said, I'm strong in my faith. I can handle this. It's not me you need to worry about, it's those weak people. And then that, uh, well, I just watch alone. It won't affect anyone else. Well, this is beautiful cinema, and God loves beautiful things. And then he says, well, we shouldn't be legalistic about these things, should we? This moves into, oh, I don't really feel the need to go to church to connect with God, into, I'm not sure that's what Jesus really said, and I don't picture God in the same way that you do. And now, as far as anyone can tell, my friend does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Why? Because he thought he could be light but still participate in darkness. He thought he could be one thing and walk another. And it's a pattern. I've seen it. And it's not just with screen stuff, it's with all sorts of other little sins. Friends, please don't give up your inheritance for a bowl of stew. It's not going to kill you to give it up, but it will kill you if you do not give it up. Of course, screen time is just one example, isn't it? But I hope we can see the warning that Paul's given us there. So friends, our walk shows what we are. So don't walk in darkness. It is deadly. So walk as, our walk shows what we are. So walk as the light, not as the darkness, but instead expose the darkness. Imagine this scene with me. And kids, uh, you, can, uh, you can listen too for this one. Annie is nine years old and she has a treasure. It's a bracelet. No one knows that she has it. She's told herself that she found it. She keeps it hidden in a little matchbox under her pillow. 
She never brings it out until she's gone to bed. Once the light goes out, she reaches under her pillow. She slides open the box and gently lifts out the bracelet. She loves it, the smooth segments, each little segment, and the clasp at the end. After feeling it for a little while, she then puts it on her wrist and she goes to sleep with it on. She's put her uh, alarm on before the light, before the sun gets up so that she can uh, quickly take it off and slip it back into the box and under her pillow before anyone sees it. One night, Annie did the same thing as she usually does, but this night she'd gone to bed with a fever and that fever gave her a bad dream and she screamed out in her dream and her mother rushed into the room and she turned on the light and then her mother screamed out, Annie, don't move! It could still be alive. But all Annie was thinking about was her bracelet. She'd left her hands out of the covers. Oh, it was too late. Surely Mummy would have seen it. But what was she talking about? What was she screaming about? What, what could be alive? Annie, there's a centipede on your arm. Don't move. You see, all this time, what Annie thought was her treasure was anything but, was it? The light exposed it for what it was. Friends, darkness is ugly. Sin is ugly. In our natural state, we're convinced that our sins are treasures because we can't see them for what they are. We only see the truth when there's light, and that is a light that comes from outside of us. That light is Christ himself. Only he can expose the ugliness of the darkness we love so much. In him and him alone we become light and begin to see the ugliness of the works of darkness that once were hidden. Because of this light, Paul can tell us two things in verse 11. Don't participate in those works of darkness, which we've seen, but also expose them. How is this possible? Verse 3, everything exposed by the light is made visible. Exposed and made visible. It means that the works of darkness are seen for what they are, just like any sense of people. And for those who've been made light, it's not hard to see the darkness of the rest of the world, is it? And there's all sorts of current issues we could name. We often see them clearly enough, but it's hard to know how to respond, isn't it? But I want to ask you this. How do you respond when the light exposes the works of darkness in your own heart? Sadly, we know from the scriptures and from our own experience that our change of identity does not mean an immediate change in our behaviour, does it? The fact is we are still plagued by sin, aren't we? And here's where the rubber meets the road. When we hear Paul's command... Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. What is our response to that? Well, I want to focus on three possible responses. Here's a first response. It's only a little thing. I don't do it that often. It's no worse than anyone, anyone else I know. Friends, if that's you, whoever you are in this room, if you are, can I say with as much weight as I can, you are in serious trouble. You have no idea of the danger you're in. You need to ask yourself if you're saying, it's just a little thing. If you have even understood what Christ has done for you. Your sin, and mine, of course, took Christ to the cross but if it's only even your sin that he went there for, he would have suffered the same. See, your sin, your works of darkness are an infinite offence to the holy God. And you can say, it's only a little thing. My friend, you have no idea who you are. If I'm sp- I have no idea who you are. If I'm speaking to you, look to the cross of Christ and tell me, actually, tell your Father in heaven, oh, that's only a little thing. Repent while there is still time. 
and put your heart hope in the blood of Christ that was shed for you. And don't believe that lie. It's only a little thing. Here's the second response. I hate my sin. It means I've failed. Is that you? Well, if it is, it's not the sin you hate. It's your failure. Or perhaps it's the embarrassment of being caught out. That was me to a T. And if I'm honest, it still is to an extent. I hated my sin being exposed, not because I hated the sin itself, but because it made me look bad in front of the other people. If you hate your sin because of what others think, you don't understand what sin is. Sin is about God and the offence it is to him. As far as you're concerned, the only God you think you're offending is yourself. You don't hate and you don't hate sin because you love God. You hate sin because you love yourself. But if you want to see just how offensive your works of darkness are to God, again look and see what he had to do in order to forgive you. Understand what it cost him to reconcile you to yourself. Our last verse is for you. And for the first response, get up, sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. You call yourself light, live like it. Let the light of Christ expose you and then respond rightly. Like this next response, a third response. And if you've been waiting for that answer that we uh, to the question that we asked at the beginning, I still sin, so am I still darkness? Well then, thanks for your patience. Let's see if we can come to an answer. <clears throat> Here's that third response. <clears throat> I hate my sin because I'm a loved child of my Heavenly Father. Friends, I know you still sin. And of course you should know that I still sin. But how can that be? If our walk shows what we are and we still sin, can anyone be saved? Yes, I know we're saved by God's free grace and not by our works. The good answer, that's the right answer. But how can we be light and still walk in darkness? Let me say as clearly as I can, though. Walking as light does not equal sinless perfection. Walking as light looks like struggle. Walking as light is a fight. We'll say things like this. I hate my sin because my Saviour died for those sins. I hate my sin because they're an offence to my Father and my Lord. I hate my sin because it's not who I am now. Friends, you are a work in progress and it's going to be hard. But the fight is part of the walk as light. The one who says, it's just a little thing. They've got no struggle. And I'd say no solid reason to believe that they've actually crossed from darkness to light. But if when your sin is exposed... You ask questions like, oh, could such works of darkness really come from light? If I really love my father, could I really keep offending him in that same way? Friends, these are signs of life. Keep up that struggle. But you don't need to struggle alone. The one who your sin offends is the one. He is the only one who can help you. He has bought you as a whole package, sins and all. You are now his problem. It took me so long to learn that lesson. My sin used to pull me into myself. Don't keep him out of that struggle. He can help you in it. He's the only one who can. So friends, we've been given a genuine warning, haven't we? We cannot be one thing and walk as another. We must walk as light and not as darkness. Darkness that we once were, but is still so deadly. And central to that walk is struggle. Isn't that good news? Struggle against the darkness that that light exposes. But we do not walk alone.
Why don't I pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have taken us from darkness to light. You have made us light. By your spirit, would you enable us to walk as light? Would you let us not give up the struggle because you struggle with us? We do pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.